Some while ago, I did a video on heat pumps and it got a lot of attention and some of the attention came from Heat Geeks, uh, which is a training organization in the depths of Surrey and they weren't happy with my, my video and they invited me to uh, come and have a chat with them. It's been a long time and they gave the impression that they were inviting me and I was chickening out. So I just want to say we got one invitation from them. That slipped through the net because we get hundreds of emails and I was only too happy to come and see them to have a chat, you know, and have a bit of an argument over it because they've got their view, I've got mine, and hopefully we can have a civilised discussion. So this is Adam from Heat Geek, and Patrick is in the background hovering around. He doesn't want to sit down for some reason. He's got ants in his pants. But anyway, he'll be contributing as he feels fit. And uh, we've got a couple of cameramen here as well. They might have a bit of a heckle as well. So let's get started anyway. Good to meet you. And you. Thanks right. for coming to see me. I'm going to let you go, mate, because uh, you've got, you know, you've seen my video. I've seen yours. Yep. It's far away. Well, before we start, or we start, I've got a gift. You're not going to give me a hat. I'm going to give you a backwards hat oh, to wear. You wear goodness. it this way around yeah, and what? a t-shirt. <laughs> well, thank you. So what is this hat wearing that way around? Well, the about? reason I wear a hat is because I've got a bloody big barnet underneath. Yeah, and yeah. if you're editing a video, it flips all over the yeah, place. Yeah, but why so... do you wear it back to front? Oh, because you look cool. Okay, fine. That's a the main reason. Do you, have you got a skateboard? I do. I have an electric skateboard. Um, <laughs> and that... I had that for the last three years instead of a car. Because uh, it was saving, you know, it's making the Brilliant. saving carbon and all the rest of it. Right. Um, so let's get cracking. Yeah. So uh, obviously there was a lot we agreed on. Um, you saw uh, particularly Patrick and myself nodding a lot. Uh, and, and the points we, we did agree on, there's nowhere near enough installers out there. And the installers out there at the moment probably aren't well trained enough. So couldn't agree more there. Um, and, and the other thing, you know, the big danger, and this is with anything where we've got the government putting in money, you get salesmen swarming and mis-selling stuff. So from that perspective, we're 100% on board. And I, I'd like to say it's not just renewables necessarily, it's anywhere where the government puts money. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I, I couldn't agree more, and it is something that needs doing something about. But that's perhaps not where we differ, but our approach is we want to do something about that. And that's what we're trying to do at HeatGeek. We're providing the training that was never really there at the beginning, the system mm. design training. The MVQ level two and three, which I have, I'm fully you know, through the apprentice route, doesn't really teach low temperature design very well, although there are courses coming out now, or hydronics. So we've kind of, we saw that coming and we've kind of addressed that. And what we are also doing, especially regarding um, salesmen coming into uh, houses and mis-selling is we're educating the customer because if we educate the customer yeah. with the correct information and what to ask they can grill that salesman find out weed him out and get rid of him boot him out the house yeah so would, would you kind of agree that there's perhaps a different approach we could take to maybe alter that issue of incorrect trainers or salesmen well I don't think you're going to reach the customer because the customer is like you know as soon as you start explaining anything to a customer, I'm not, you know, there are customers who are interested, but generally they're not. Generally they just, you know, they take the word of whoever and that's what they have. And, and the problem is as soon as the government get involved in anything, we've got problems. You know, the, the Green Deal, you can go right back to any bit of initiative, any kind of subsidy that they've put into an industry, they've kind of not done it very intelligently. And at some point they pulled a rug. And when they pulled a rug, you get this boom bust in an industry. Now, my feeling is that what you're doing is absolutely right. I absolutely applaud that. And that the heat pump industry, the market can mature mm. on its own without the subsidies. The problem with the subsidies is that they're giving enough money to do 30,000 heat pump installations a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. 5,000 pound grant. Mm -hmm. There are already 30,000 pounds, sorry, there are already 30,000 heat pump installations a year, roughly, mm -hmm. okay? So if you give a grant to people for 30,000 installs a year, mm -hmm. how does that grow the market? Because mm -hmm. all the people who were gonna have it installed are mm -hmm. gonna say, thanks very much, that's 5,000 pounds, I'll take that and fly to Barbados. And the people that are after that cutoff point, because every year they would cut it off at that point and say you have to wait till next year, till the next injection of funds, those people will say, well, I'm not going to have it when there's no grant available. Why would I do that? And they're going to wait. So 
so the, the whole industry is going to be on this roller coaster, which I think will do it harm. Really, I, really I, do. I do understand that. But the reason we're at 30,000 heat pump installs at the moment is because we've been having the RHI yeah, the whole yeah, time. Absolutely. So if we just stopped the RHI, we wouldn't continue at 30,000 heat pump installs. Uh, I, I do agree. They need to give more uh, grants for more than 30,000 installs because uh, we need to do slightly more than that to get to the target of 600,000 per year in I forget what year that target's for and if we don't do any of that what are we going to do because we can't just sit there and cross our fingers and hope we come out well at the other end so we need to do something uh, and, and that's kind of leads on to one of the other well one of the main issues or questions I have around both videos, mm -hmm. which is where you repeatedly say that there's uh, the government are going to throw 11.8 billion pounds yeah. at heat pumps, yeah. and I, th I know where the figure 8.11 billion comes from. Yeah. But where that hasn't been granted or said, the no, government hasn't. Th th I think actually what happened there is when I put that video out, I don't think you were even aware of it because you were saying, "What's he talking about? The RHI, the renewable heat incentive, is coming to an end." Where's this money? Now, this was something I got wind of early on, yes. that they were going to do this. And that £11.8 billion pounds was spread over three years. You know, Actually, I think it was going to be £18 billion, or £6 billion a year at one point. Yeah. And that, you know, it was, it was put out there that it was going to be for heat pumps. And it generally was for quite a lot of renewables. It wasn't just for heat pumps in the end. But I think the initial thing was that they did think... We bun that kind of money, you know. This in the in the in Whitehall, there were people yeah. saying we're going to put that kind of money into there, yeah. and then somebody said to them, "You won't be able to do it because there won't be the capacity in the industry." And yep. this is why they've pulled back like mad because there aren't the installers. Yeah, people can't get it serviced. Yeah, the heat pumps aren't available. You know, we there's a lot of there's a lot uh, of well, a I, mess. I, I know where there. the 11.8 billion did come from. Yeah, it's from on. a study from the uh, Energy Energy Efficiency Infrastructure Group yeah. uh, who wants the full cost of installations for heat pumps hmm. in low-income uh, low household to be paid for and grants of up to £6,000 for other installations. And they said the government have far way underestimated the cost. They should be, in order to achieve that, um, yeah. uh, costing £11.8 So that's yeah. where it come from. Okay. It's what they should have, you know, according to one group, be putting towards it. And I'd probably agree, £11.8 is the right amount. As it stands... So, uh, um, uh, and we can come on to it, because that's conjecture, yeah, yeah. really, how much you yeah, think. Yeah. The go I mean, it's a political thing as well, which neither of our channels are about. Well, but we, we can I still am. talk. We, I'm, I'm well, increasingly about the politics. Well, because I'm happy to politics, talk about it. It's nonsense. I, I'm happy to talk about it, though. Yeah. Um, uh, but as it stands, the uh, the bus scheme, boiler upgrade scheme, which yeah. is where they donate money for you to rip out your boiler and put in a heat pump, yeah. uh, is contributing £450 million, which is, you know, less than a twentieth of the eight yeah. point. 11.8 yeah. billion. So if anyone's watching and they've still got the 11.8 billion in their mind, that's nowhere near reality. Um, okay. The funding is dropping yeah. uh, uh, um, from, from where we were with the RHI previously. But the, the, the thing stands, if we don't put the 450 million in to help heat pumps uh, and we don't move towards our, our CO2 targets, we've signed up to the Paris Agreement and COP26 later, yeah. we get fined £40 per yeah. tonne afterwards. We're on track for an £8 billion fine yeah. if we don't hit our targets by 2035. Yeah. So we either invest to try and help that. We can't go back and unsite. It's, we're legally, it's enshrined in law. Mm. So we're going to be paying one way or another. And that's just forgetting about, you know, yeah. the environment, yeah. if you believe in that or not. You know, I'm not accusing you of, but some of the viewers don't. Um, <laughs> well, you know, so the, what, what do, do we not invest and then we pay the bill at the end? Well, this is this is a, a trap that we've put ourselves into, and now right. what we're doing with it is, is we. This is a fudge. This is an absolute con, and and the did you know in, in the Daily Mail it said you know the biggest con going because it is a massive con the whole thing because all you're doing here is cherry picking technologies, which will make a very very tiny contribution to cutting carbon emissions. Very very small, very small indeed because there's embedded carbon in them for a start. Where are the heat pumps being made? Are there any, any many in China? Pumps? Are there any British heat pumps being made? Uh, that, that's all under development at the moment because they're being pushed to. Okay. The, um, so, so what we're doing is we're looking at this because we want to do 
a little bit to be seen to be doing the right thing. A bit of virtue signaling, I would call it, yeah? So they're saying, oh, look, let's put some heat pumps in. We're going to subsidise heat pumps because, as you say, we've got ourselves in a situation if we don't subsidise them, we pay the money in fines anyway. Yes. So we subsidise the heat pumps. The carbon emissions, right, from buying heat pumps from, from China who are burning half the world's coal at the moment and... And, and manufacturing and, half the world's yeah, stuff. and set to burn more on our behalf. So all yeah. we've actually done... They also manufacture on our behalf yeah, as well. That's right? what I'm saying. On our behalf, yeah. they are burning half the world's coal yes, because yes, yes, we yes. need this stuff, all this stuff, that yes. everything, pick it up, it comes yes, from China, right? Yes, yes. So it's a nonsense. So unless you have some kind of... It's got to be a global approach. It can't just be the UK saying, we're going to do our bit, we've got to do our bit. And I understand what you're saying because that, I, that's I remember what looking at your video. About. Yeah, I understand that, but it's nonsense. It's absolutely nonsense because unless we have something like a border carbon tax where everything that comes in from China, we look at the carbon, we put a tax on it, and that starts to redress the balance. I, and then at some point people say, maybe we need to produce heat pumps in the UK because actually by the time they've been produced by coal-fired power stations, mm. they're nearly as expensive. So the, the whole thing uh, I, I, is just nonsense. I agree with know, some really. of those points. But um, so, yes, heating, well, actually heating is one of the main contributors within the UK for yes. carbon. Well, but but, but look, all, carbon doesn't come from one source. It comes from, yes, manufacturing in China. It, calls, it comes from heating in the UK. It comes from manufacturing. It's There's lots of different areas. And the government isn't only saying UK homes should reduce carbon. They're doing lots of other measures uh, in transport, for example, mm -hmm. to try and lower carbon. Yeah. And if we could have a world government that could tell other countries what to do, like, for example, a union, like a European union or something like that, people probably won't want to be controlled in that way. People want less control at the moment, yeah, if yeah, anything. Absolutely. So I think that we have to perhaps lead by example. Um, but if we're coming back but, to... But how does that work? How does that lead by example work? You know, we're, we're despised by many European countries now, you know, for rightly or wrongly, for whatever. You know, China's not interested in our example. Nobody's interested in our example. Is yeah. it, it's naive to think that we set some standard that the world will follow. Go, oh, look at Britain, aren't they doing well? Let's copy them. Uh, as as manufacturing happen. improves and, and there's more volume of things coming out, have you seen the price of uh, solar panels, how fast that's rocketing? Yeah. Yeah. It actually becomes more um, sustainable for poorer com uh, countries to be able to afford these yeah. things because it's yeah. a practice thing. Yeah, yeah. That's one kind of example. But going back to uh, finance, because even if you're not looking at that and saying, because we we could say, yeah, you're right. Uh, we could wait for China to do something, or whatever. No, no, I don't, no. We still need we still need to do something about this eight billion pound bill, uh, and or just feel like we're doing something. You know, a lot of people are buying electric cars now because they know it's the right thing to do for the environment. Have um, you got any? You haven't got an electric car. Now I do. Yeah, I've, do? it's only about two months old. How's that working out? It's amazing. Is it's, it? It's very. And fun. Do you do any long journeys in it? Um, not particularly. Yeah, so um, it's around the houses. You go to Sainsbury's. I, I, know, I know we've been away in it and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of a mix. Yeah. Uh, I, I do had, live locally. I had an electric van on, on test. Right. You know, and I loved it. I thought it's amazing to drive, mm. fantastic. And I love the idea I can go yeah. to London and, you know, not pollute. You know, I'm absolutely for it. Air quality is a big issue. Mm -hmm. Massive. You know, mm -hmm. forget the, the global, yeah. the climate change and everything else. Air quality is a massive issue. So yes. I'd be all for getting rid of diesels tomorrow if we could. But the fact is that when we loaded that van up and I drove up to Dylan's at Colchester, touch and go whether we would get there. Yeah. And when we got to Colchester, Dylan had, while I carried on doing the work at his place, Dylan had to go out and find a charger for it. One of the chargers was out of order, the other one is out of order. So, so we, we came back from there, the stress of driving along the M25 and that little tortoise was going, get off the road now, you know, and we'd going, can we make it, can't we make it? We took all the tools out, left them at Dylan's place, and um, we stripped down all the weight we could just to get back. We didn't have the heater on, we didn't have the windscreen wipers on, and we just the, limped home. The, the, the difference stress. being is how, how far you can get on a car has kind of stopped. Yeah. How far you get in a, an electric vehicle is continuously increasing as the yeah, technology yeah. improves. And the, even the algorithms, as they change, they'll get further on the same battery. Yeah, yeah. So you're right, but within the next two years, they're but, going to be going another 10, but, 20, 30 but Adam, further. It, it isn't the cars, it's the charging. This is my, uh, this the, is my the, Which issue. is under development. So, yeah. so it is under development, but it needs to be done first because it's cart before the horse again. It's, it's the but, wrong... But, unless we get chargers out there in, in significant numbers, you look at the queues 
A but charger's the, on the motorway. But no one's going to invest in a charger that's not going to pay back. So we've looked at getting a rapid charger here, actually, and it does make economical sense, provided mm. we've got people that are there to charge. Mm. So it's what comes first, chicken or egg. There has to be a simultaneous mm. approach. Mm. And there will always be one lagging behind the other. But as long as it's moving forward in a direction... But just pulling this back to um, heating, if if we if I may. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, what what I'd like to know is if 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 we aren't going to um, put any money towards heat pumps in an ideal world, uh, and let's even imagine perhaps that we didn't even have the the, the fine coming, what are we going to do? Uh, I mean, there's there's four things we can do. We can wait for nothing. Wait for something to be um, manufactured that's. Um, uh, cheaper to install than a boiler or as cheap as an boiler, cheaper to run uh, uh, than a boiler and low carbon. And they're individual challenges. They're not, they're yeah. not succinct. They don't come together. Oh, and it's also no. got to be quiet and fit in a house and all the other little things. So we wait for something which could be, might be outside the human capability to even make something like that. No, so we could, we could do that. Well, it uh, isn't. It isn't. It, there's money there. Whoever makes it will be a billionaire. Yeah, of so course. someone, should, of course. And it, uh, will, and, and it will happen like every other bit. There at was, some point, look, have you got one of these? Phone? Mobile phone, yeah. Yeah? You got one? I have. You got one? You got one? Even my mum had one, you know, and that's saying something, right? There was no subsidy. There was, you know, they didn't need to subsidise mobile phones to get the population to go, oh, that's a bloody good idea, I'll have one of those. This idea that but you this, need to subsidise technology... The challenge the of making low-carbon heating slightly more yeah, difficult it doesn't, than... it doesn't work. If the market, if the market... It's, right. If, if a heat pump is such a compelling proposition mm -hmm. that you can save money on it, that it's cleaner for the environment, I am taking out my gas boiler tomorrow. And I'm not kidding you, I will, right? If yeah, you yeah. could prove to me, I'm here today with your thing, that there is a viable proposition for me. We did it in Dylan's house. We yep. put a heat pump in Dylan's house and we, we kept the boiler and we ran both and we compared and quite honestly... You know, I live in a leaky old. I like to see how the heat pump was installed. Yeah, well, and I, have a honestly, little, and okay. I'll do that free of charge. Well, you wouldn't because it's gone. Right. We, we sold it on eBay. We got right. rid of it. It was a video that we did for okay. a heat pump company. I won't right. even name them. Uh, right. And okay, I just follow the drawing, you know, and that's all I do because you're talking about system design, and and I, I got this time and time again. I said I've installed heat pumps. The customers weren't impressed. In yep. a lot of cases, the customers weren't impressed. Not in all cases. Um, and people say, well, that's your fault. You're an idiot. You're, you can't install heat pumps. Well, maybe I'm an idiot, but I'm fairly typical of a lot of plumbers, a lot of installers. I'm not stupid. I'm not totally stupid anyway. But, yeah. but I, I get a drawing, I follow it, yeah. and then I walk away, okay? Yeah, so, the, the problem is the understanding of the original design and the way you commission it has to marry up. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, and I didn't commission it because I couldn't exactly. because it's a computer and I thought I'll get yeah, the yeah. guy in to commission that, that it. I can guarantee that there could have been more cop to squeeze out of that. So yeah, that's yeah. a set. I think we kind of agree there, to be quite honest well, anyway, we, we which did. is fine. But that has left a misunderstanding of how well you think heat pumps perform. So in the first video, you say heat pumps cost roughly, and I quote, three times more, more to run. Yeah. And uh, you also say on average, average throughout the year, you're looking at roughly a, a two to one of how, how they perform average throughout the year. Cop. That's in no Nowhere three, near. Three to one, I think. It's no, it's two, two, oh, it's, uh, I'll whatever. tell you the time code uh, at four minutes 25 in the first video. No, hold on, that's not it. Yeah, you say, uh, so we've got to uh, spend a vast amount of fortune bringing these houses up scratch. So this is if we build, put the house up scratch and put the insulation in. Yeah. So we can install heat pumps. Uh, that's best going to give us a two for one averaged out throughout the year and heating season. Okay. That's nowhere near correct. And that's making well, heat I, pumps I think not the sound. Energy Saving Trust, when they did their, their, their trials, and you probably know all about their trials. I do. Got 2.9 out of Yeah, there. rubbish. Okay. Well, that's more. That's still really right, three. That's point nine. Okay, so but, so you know, that's so, two point one. So three to one. But okay, that, but that that so that's so we're arguing over point nine. But okay, yeah, fine. That's yeah, all right. but that's okay. also uh, that's also measuring the installs out there are half crap. So it's measuring half crap. The the goal is yeah. to get everyone up to a good standard where they're all good. Then the average is going to be more like three point five. Yeah, how realistic is that? You're doing. Uh, I you're do, doing I'm your stepping bit. up to the challenge. Yeah, I yeah, do believe course, we can achieve but, it. But what I'm saying is, it's not how, that much. Learning. Okay, you're charging what a thousand pounds a time for a course? Yes. Uh, online courses. Yes. They don't actually bums on seats here. They're, they're doing it online. Because on, design is only on paper. There's no... Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You know, that's all so, right. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm not... I'm not no, that's fine. I'm just you're, clarifying for anyone watching. Yeah, so, so you're, 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 you're looking to... Right, we know that the, the, the training that's on offer at the moment is woefully inadequate, mm. right? Your training is, you know... The, Thank you. ...the leading 
leading standard. But how many heat pump installers are going to go on your courses to do it? Where are the rewards for them? Yep. Because we've got a, a video coming up soon where we talk to a heat pump installer who's worked for one of the big yes. companies that's yes. going out there pumping. Yes. They've got the salesman. Yeah? He said they were promised training. He said the training actually in the end, after months of delay, where they were just chucking them into the building to do the job, mm -hmm. he said after months of delay, yeah. they had their training took place on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Friday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, it's right? typical. So, That's our industry. Well, yeah, but... but but and here, how here's you, my point. How you move allow from me that. To, yeah, allow but, me to rebut that. How you to move that. from that to you. Perfect. Is, this is, this is, you uh, can't do it. Thank you for the opportunity for me to mm. answer that exact issue. So we don't have to train everyone in the country at all. The idea is that we distill uh, the information within the industry so it starts getting passed down and talked about throughout the industry. Hence why we also do free videos where mm. people can come. You can actually learn almost all of our course from the videos. The course is just structured in a way that it ensures you've taken in the information and not just memorised it but understood understood it. So the idea is to, and, and we've never been in this situation before where we've had a resource at the end of our finger on site to learn anything at any no, one no, time. Absolutely. So we have yeah. an opportunity to upskill quicker and better than ever before in history and that's increasing further and further. Mm. So our, our kind of vision is to yes train up some people and we do make money out of that and the reason we want to make money is because we want to make more courses etc. Um, is to get so how people are trained at the moment is they're told by their, their, you know, their old man that they work for, right, you run three rads or 15 mil, and then that's passed down, etc. We're trying to intercept that, get some new information in there through the free videos on YouTube, and train one in a 20 uh, plumbers uh, who also talk online to each other and help teach each other free yeah, of charge. Yeah, yeah. And then all together, hopefully, we can get better. And I, I say hopefully, I'm already seeing it. We're already all seeing it. The level that people talk at now compared to even one year ago is incomparable. Absolutely. So yeah. I have 100% faith this is a challenge that we can achieve. I don't think you ought to give up on it. I think absolutely fine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in any way <laughs> trying, to, to, trying to denigrate what you're doing. All I'm saying is let's be realistic. If we're yep. talking about that level of you know, install, if we're talking about the numbers they're talking about, and I'll bring something else into oh. it in a moment, right? If we're talking about that, they're going to need a lot of well-trained installers. Now, in my experience, even if you're looking at gas you know, boilers and, and so on, the installers, the really good ones who can do the job well, are just kind of not out there, you know. And and I there are going to be a lot of people who have been drawn into this industry who are going through a bit of training saying, right, go out and earn yeah. your living. And let's face it, as far as they're concerned, it's all about earning a living in the end. You know, it's not about becoming professors or anything Agreed. else or becoming geeks like yourself. Agreed. It's about, I just want to go and install heat pumps yep. and uh, go home on a Friday night. Mm -hmm. So... It, it, I, right. I agree. So, so the, the, other the, the, tar the targets are the targets aren't really achievable. No. Uh, uh, I, I totally agree with you there. Um, right. uh, uh, um, but we do still need to make a big change. So the fact that the targets are difficult to achieve, uh, targets and red tape. I really don't care for red tape or anything like that. I, it's not some. But what we do need, what we do know is, is that we need to renew the heating industry. So as long as that's done, we know we've done our bit. If there is too much uh, investment from the government to help people or not enough, whatever, that's neither here nor there. As long as our bit's done yeah. is the way I see yeah, it. Yeah. So bring us back to the point on uh, a new technology, like the mobile phone that yeah, yeah, self-funds yeah. itself, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So um, in, in my opinion, that's quite a big challenge, which could take one or 200 years to develop whatever it is that might need developing, potentially. If that's the case, what would you say we do? We still wait for that, or do we fund I, I, money towards innovation, I, or do we not? Yeah, do well, we absolutely, right. So some of this money that is now being spent on subsidising heat pumps and other technologies is being diverted from research in, in other ways. Yeah, I, I, I kind of see that, right, if you've got an oil boiler in your house, get yourself a heat pump yeah because the oil is a lot more polluted than the gas mm -hmm. my initial problem and the reason that i made that video i said more specifically the government's intention to incentivize people to rip out their gas boilers and put in heat pumps that's where i see the car crash that's where i see the massive well, right so start okay. start with oil boilers right get rid of oil boilers put in heat pumps yeah you're gonna you're gonna save money and you're gonna help the mm. environment Take out a gas boiler and put in a heat pump. Now, where's where's the electricity coming from that powers a heat pump? Uh, a mix of gas and renewables. Right. Now, the renewables are what? 
Would, uh, percentage wise? No, no. What are the renewables? So wind, wind solar, yeah. hydro. Yeah, wind, solar, hydro. How much hydro is there in this country? I, I don't very, know what very. Little. The only in percentage France, I know is France has quite a lot, right? They've got bigger mountains. They've got the Alps and yes. all the rest of it. You yes. know, in, in Scandinavia, it's quite a lot. Yeah. Um, in this country, hardly any. Yeah. Some of it is wind just is basically kind of daytime pumping up. You know, you you pump it up to the top of the mountain. You let it out. We haven't end. got the geology for hydro, really. right? So, so hydro is not. So forget hydro. So mm-hmm. we so if we're talking renewables, we're talking about wind, and Mainly. we're talking about solar, right? Correct. And both of those are intermittent. Both of Correct. those do not go we twenty four hours a day, right? Yes. You need storage, yes. Or you need you need gas backup, right? Now, yes. if you've got gas yeah. backup, okay, you've got a gas fired power yeah. station. Now, if I come to you as an investor, right, you've mm-hmm. got a few bob tucked away, right, mm-hmm. and I say to you, I want to I want to build a new Gas fired power station. Yeah. You're going to give me some money for it. You say to me, well, how much are we going to be able to sell this electricity for when we've regenerated it? And I say, well, on a good day, we, you know, when the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining, everyone's going to want our electricity. You say, so what happens on the other side? Well, we're going to have to sit there on our hands waiting for the customers to come along. Mm-hmm. So therefore, the market is distorted by that alone you know by the fact that you've and and the investment in in gas fired power stations won't happen unless people can get a market for it and Mm -hmm. you can see the problem yeah yeah Um, i mean this is the reason for uh, things like time of use tariffs to literally help correct this this issue so there is a there's literally a a, a resolution to it there isn't it's not a full but okay let's look at this look at this let's remove all renewables feeding into the grid and just say it's gas fired producing the electricity why why are we doing that because we're looking at the extreme to see no no we don't need to well can i use can i can i show you give you a a hypothetical situation and you give me your opinion on it so we remove all um uh, renewables and just say we're gas fired we're still going to produce much less carbon if all of those heat pumps are powered by gas fired power stations because heat pumps will operate at three to one more like 3.5 to one now with modern units uh, and a gas boiler is 90 percent efficient mm. so you're having to use way less gas and release less gas uh, co2 into the atmosphere couple that with the fact that we're only actually producing uh 40 uh, percent of the electricity from gas because the rest is made up by electricity mm. uh, sorry by renewables means we're infinitely better off than where we were does it well, not? <clears throat> I would say take out the word infinitely and put in the word marginally. Yeah. So we're four because times. We're four, if, if I don't, th- I don't believe. I, look, you're not a scientist. If, I'm not a scientist. No. But okay. Let's 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 be fair. We, the maths all, all is simple, we get, though. All we get, yeah. But all we get is information from other people that we have to just make a judgment on. Okay. So we've got no way of knowing what the truth is about this. But we're told about things like transmission losses. We're told about efficiencies in gas-fired power stations mm-hmm. and so on. We're told about efficiencies in boilers. There, there is a, a lobby that says that actually by the time you produce electricity from gas-fired power stations, send it down the grid to your house, put it through the heat pump. It's, if anything, about the same. You know, it, about 120% efficiency okay. there. You know. Well, that's what they say. You know, okay, so I've seen figures which say, you know, we, we could go on like this. We get about day, 45 right? at the plug socket and then you run it through a three to one. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that, so there you are. So it's 45% at the plug socket, yeah. which is the other thing, you know, compared to where you started with the gas fired power station. And then you get three to one. And you're, you're saying three to one now is the realistic figure, yeah? No, three and a half to one is more realistic with new units and good design. Yeah, are we getting that? Are we getting the new units? Are, are uh, the guys, yes, the new the guys ones that are, are selling. The, the the new units are no, not all the guys. No, because the the, uh, the other variable is the design and the installation. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, the other half of the yeah. puzzle. So let's talk realistically and typically. Those guys who are going out selling these these units, the big companies, yeah. are they going to put in the best unit or the cheapest unit? I think there's going to be a wide array. And the yeah, more we teach yeah. the installers, and I know we're not going to get through to all uh, homeowners, but we're going to get through to some, to be able to look at the proposal and go, oh, you're giving me this unit, but it only performs at three to one, where yeah. this person's quite slightly more, but it gives three, three and a half, four to yeah, one. Yeah. That's where education comes in. Yeah. And this is the same as the installers have at the end of their finger, they've got the infinite encyclopedia yeah, yeah, that we're yeah. now all using. So the customers now, you'd have never been able to type in your phone three months ago, or sorry, three years ago, what What's the best heat pump or, or give me information about heat pump and really Absolutely. get anything. Yeah, yeah. And now all of a yeah, sudden yeah. you can. The world's changing very quickly mm. in that respect. Mm. Um, what, 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 okay. If, if we don't, 
I mean, if we don't, where obviously hydrogen's come. Where do you stand with hydrogen? <laughs> well, I, I, I've been watching. In fact, I was on a, a webinar with the hydrogen people. You know, some fantastic work going on in hydrogen. Mm-hmm. There are some massive problems with producing hydrogen and and sending it down the pipelines. And the, the, the thing that slightly baffles me is that I look around. I was working somewhere the other day, and outside they were renewing the gas main. You know, digging up the roads, putting in mm-hmm. the polyethylene pipe, and renewing it. And that's going to be hydrogen ready. And yet people are telling us that they're going to do away with gas boilers. Why are they they replacing all this gas infrastructure if we're not going to need it in, when are they talking, 2035 or whatever? I don't know. That that, that was kind of one of my main points here. At the end of the videos, you basically say, look, I think we find that the end uh, solution is staring us in the face in water, you know, using electricity to split water, etc. The issue I have there is, so originally you said 11.8 billion towards heat pumps, yeah. which actually is only four and a half, uh, 450 million. Um, to renew, do you know how much renewing the gas main is to upgrade it to be safe to carry hydrogen? Well, they're doing it. It's, yeah, they're doing it. And it's going to be 130 billion. Yeah. That's 280 times more than is being given towards heat pumps. Hmm. If we gave that same money to the 90,000 heat pumps in the bus scheme, they'd get 1.45 million pounds per home. So it's, it, we can't say, don't go and help heat pumps. That, that's a, a technology we're not sure about, but we're going to give 230 billion towards hydrogen. Perhaps maybe curve back that idea uh, and do divert some money towards, towards um, uh, heat pumps. Additionally, the gas and oil industry get 10 billion pounds a year. Hmm. The 450 million for, um, for, for, for the bus scheme, that's over three years. Ten billion pound a year for oil and gas uh, exploration and recovery. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not right. There needs to be a re. So and, and also, I might like to say as well, we do actually have to put that money into oil and gas because it comes back in the form of economics. Uh, uh, it gives people jobs. Um, you know, it, it stirs the pot. Well, but there's, we can, there's a massive revenue to be had from it as well. Well, you know, and, right. and these oil and gas firms, they're not British owned. No, no, that money no, is just no. going straight overseas. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I'd rather put the money in insulation firms and in people's houses than give it to oil and gas exploration owned by French or Chinese or whatever other firm to export that money. I think we do need to invest somewhere because otherwise nothing's going to happen. Uh, and, and, and doing and investing creates jobs. I, I do think, think investing should... investing is absolutely the right thing to do, all right? Yeah. Not subsidising. Subsidising and investing are two different things, yeah? Um, I think there's too much of a No, 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 you're throwing yeah. money. You're throwing taxpayers' money. Right, so if we just take somebody who's going to have a heat pump installed, right? You're mm-hmm. saying to them, you're going to get £5,000 from the government. Mm-hmm. It's going to cost you, say, you know, I'm being maybe mischievous here, but I said another 10000 quid, all right? So £15,000 installed by the time we've done... That's by, good... by the time we've done the insulation, upgraded the pipe work, put, yeah. in, the, put in the buffer tank or, or volumizer that you were saying we don't need, but at the end of your video, say, well, perhaps we you do. do sometimes need We them. do sometimes need it, but the manufacturers are saying put it in any way because... Correct. It, Covers your ass. Covers the ass, yeah. yeah. And, and absolutely, right? So so we're arguing well, over the semantics here. But you just, oh, you start on my video by saying, oh, we don't need a buffer tank. By the end of it, you're going, well, perhaps Patrick, the reasonable voice in the room who won't even come in, is saying, yeah, perhaps you do, actually. He's got a point. You know? No, he said, so, no, his, no, his point was uh, manufacturers now say that you yeah, should um, yeah. install buffers. Uh, 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 so, so, so if you don't install a buffer and there's a problem with it and you call a guy out from the warranty company, he goes, well, you haven't got a bloody buffer tank. Go, go and get a buffer tank fitted. And... and stings you for a hundred quid visit you know you've got to put a buffer tank in if a manufacturer say you've got to put a buffer tank in otherwise your warranty has gone everything else is gone so, yeah yeah, yeah so no, it's no, nonsense to say they don't all, don't they don't all but they don't no, all no, say that but Some when they do that. when they do then when they, they do, do you should and, and actually and, and, and actually think, it's safe you know you, you're covering your ass yeah it you. does reduce efficiency though yeah. they're, they're an ass cover um, uh, but what we need to do, again, it's a systemic issue in our industry of the lack of knowledge and understanding, which I think Absolutely. we can address. And once people are speaking the same language in it, because at the moment we've got people talking about hydronics and low loss headers and buffers, which yeah. isn't normal conversation. No, no. It's a little bit far for a like normal plumber down to the earth guys to mm. expect them to just be there. And, and the installers aren't talking, uh, sorry, the manufacturers aren't talking that level either. Um, uh, and what we need to do is introduce a language where we all understand what each other are saying. And, and uh, uh, then from there, we can grow into a position where we go, right, we're looking at each situation its own. Um, this situation, you will need one. This situation, you won't need one. Let's do what works best. Uh, just chucking rules of thumb in uh, how we've ended up um, with the 
cops of two or three to mm. one that we've mm. got at the moment. We, yeah, need, yeah. we need to do something to get more out of what we've got until this magic thing that comes out that fits in a house is quieter, cheaper than a boiler, uh, cheaper than a boiler to run, cheaper than a boiler to install, you know, and all the other things that mm. we need to try and achieve. So mm. we've got, I'm, I'm all about working with what we've got. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So um, obviously, you know, you, your video is put across as very anti-heat pumps. And the SCOPs uh, figures that you state and the running costs aren't remotely close to accurate for me. But isn't it true that perhaps you might be in the pocket of a specific boiler manufacturer that might make you sway your opinion in that direction? Mm. Yeah, I'd love to be. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any out there who want to bribe me. No, seriously, uh, you know, I've said that, you know, I spent years bending to the will of advertisers when I was on the trade press and I didn't like it. When we got the YouTube channel, I said to Dylan, now we can do what we want to do. We can, we can. And the great thing is, the fantastic thing about YouTube is slag off heat pumps and what do you get? Adverts for heat pumps coming up on the video. So it's the best of all possible worlds. So there's no need for me to, to do that. And, and I don't, you know, no, no boiler manufacturer is paying me. Now, having said that, mm. we are doing some stuff for companies that do boiler installs. But they're across all the range, yeah, and they also do heat pump installs. So that's that's one thing. And we have also done things for heat pump manufacturers. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those ones where if we do a sponsored video, that's a very difficult thing these days because yeah. we, we, we always say this is sponsored, you know, the sponsored mm -hmm. content here. So we're not hiding that mm -hmm. from anybody. And we, we always make sure that if there's anything where they're trying to twist my arm, say something about a product that is untrue or I don't agree with then I resist it because I don't need I don't need to do it now you know I'm not boasting yeah. but I've got enough money you know I'm, I'll, I'll pay for my house I don't need it you know my kids have grown up you know so why would I want to I'm that far from getting into heaven why would I want to <laughs> why would I want to screw it up now you know yeah sure <laughs> okay no, yeah, let's try that yep. hand on heart yeah okay so okay so I'm declaring I have no vested interest in uh in boilers, have you got a vested interest in heat pumps? Uh, I, I don't think I could, um, with a clear conscience, say um, no because we want to train people up mm. to install the heat pumps. Mm. We're the best people to train them up currently, and we're going to make money charging to do that. Mm. Uh, rightly so, as yeah. business should work. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't say no, but um, uh, we are led by uh, we are led by the facts, and also. As a really probably big important point that I haven't made yet, we're also the UK's number one hydrogen fuel cell boiler installers, which yeah. is that unit over there. I'll probably show yeah, you that yeah, in a bit. Yeah. Um, our, our number one product is uh, essentially it's a it's a gas boiler that takes in natural gas, turns it into hydrogen, mm. um, runs that through a, a fuel cell process, which creates heat and electricity. It's a very quick rundown. We've got mm. view, uh, view, video on it. Yeah. Uh, so there is no bias in us to what we would. Um, uh, uh, say people should have um uh, so uh, and also our training it benefits people installing gas boilers as well low temperature heating design makes all of your installations whatever the heat source better mm. so um not from a manufacturer but only from our you know own interests in the in mm. in the heat pump industry but we're not just in heat pumps we do gas boilers mm. we do commercial gas boilers uh, and we do uh, we're the only people really doing hydrogen Hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and actually, just to make the statement now, hydrogen, as the UK's number one installer, is not the long-term answer. Hmm. Again, well, they that. say about hydrogen, it's the fuel of the future and always will be. So um, I kind of, I understand what people are saying about hydrogen. I still think at some point, and JCB are doing some interesting things with hydrogen, and I still think there isn't going to be a battery answer to putting a tractor out in the field for 12 hours a day, you know, when, they, when they're bringing the harvest in, those, those guys don't want to be stopping for a recharge. You know? I, I should um, clarify the point. In home heat, in domestic home heating, typically, yeah. there might be the odd, you know, castle out there or whatever that will need hydrogen. Certainly, yeah. you know, transport, you know, aircraft, stuff like that, which I don't know about, probably hydrogen. Yeah. But for domestic home heating, you know, the way heat pumps are going and the way the conversation is going with installers, it's only going one way. Yeah. Do you know what? I love it when people say that will never happen. I remember having a conversation many, many years ago with a photographer friend of mine 
uh, when I was just getting into doing a bit of uh, video as well as photography and I said to him, what I'd really like is a camera that could do video and stills photography. <laughs> great guy, great friend of mine, he said to me, that will never happen. <laughs> you know, sure. and that, and that, I love that when people say, you know, it's like that guy, everything that can be invented has been invented. Mm. You know, that was back mm. in 18 whatever, that guy said that famously, you know, some politician. Good point, whatever. understood. But, you know, it's great. So to say it will never happen, you know, is, is and why would... It's a bold statement. Why would people be carrying on doing research, development, they're just about to do some trials, they're just about to do a hydrogen village on heating. Yeah. And I know all the huge problems with it. You know, everybody talks about the Hindenburg and so on. You know, it does go bang. You know, it's yeah. not to, it's sure. not to be underestimated. I would like to see gas boilers. <laughs> I can't really say this. This is going, I'm shooting myself in the foot here. But I would like to see gas boilers on the outside of buildings because I'm saying, oh, don't put those heat pumps out there. But actually... Mm. If you could pipe a gas boiler up without putting gas inside the building mm. and you could have a little cupboard in there, insulated cupboard with your gas boiler on the outside, could be serviced from the outside and everything else, I think you'd be on to something. Mm. The other thing, because we've got to look at is district heating as well, isn't it? Which is, Of course, yeah, yeah. Which is all, and that know. actually, that may involve hydrogen again, potentially. Mm. So, you know, i already eat my words there because that mm. will be... Supplying yeah. domestic yeah. homes. Yeah, as I say, I probably it's won't. A mix. I won't be around long enough for me to come back and say, I "Told you so." So, I, 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 do you know what? I really should have said that, and I'll tell you why. Because our company, like, other than renew the heating industry, um, kind of motto is: "There's no panacea. There's no one answer. Mm. Heat pumps aren't the one answer. We should fit them where we can." Uh, mm. But really, the approach is: we look at each situation and see what fits best. Like mm. the electric boilers mm. may fit in some scenarios. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and, what about banning you know, gas boilers completely? Because all these people living in flats, and you know, when you start going around the country it was a bit like when they talked about putting water meters in everywhere and then they went into the flats and oh where are we going to put this we don't even know which which bit of pipe supplies which flat you know so in oh. the end they gave up on that idea of compulsory yeah. meters in every house again i'm not one for red tape but having said that for builders who are just going on cost they need their arm twisted. We need policy there. You know, we're talking about mass houses are being built, not a self-builder mm. or whatever, because I think mm. a self-builder would think about the future and, you know, yeah. why would you want to spend a load of money on a self-build and then put in an old mm. gas boiler? It's old mm. tech. It's not going to get more efficient. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not really fully on board with the banning gas boilers, if I'm totally honest. And we're going to need them between. Heat pumps aren't cut. They don't fit in every yeah. house. What about hybrid? What about a, a gas boiler stroke heat pump, which is what they've got in France now? And yeah, it's quite a lot those. of money because if, if you're spending an extra couple of grand there, I, I, and often you get, again, these sales companies that say, yeah. oh, we can put in a hybrid. That'll work in a situation. Take that couple of grand extra for that boiler and the integration of the, the buffer. You could have put more insulation in and the heat pump would have worked fine on its own. So I worry about the cop-out that people kind of um, use. Well, the thing I it. like about the gas boiler is that you can say um, it's a cold night mm. you know it's an extra cold night here so, so when you can run at 50 absolutely fine when it when the, the temperature drops to minus five or whatever outside and there's a howling wind going you go oh do you know what I'm going to bring the boiler in at this point so for 2,000 quid extra if I thought that I didn't have to replace my radiators and all the pipe work and everything else because I could run at 50 when it suited me and 70 when I needed that extra heat, it would be a good thing. Now, having said that, let me just bring up one more point because Urban Plumber, I think he deserves a mention. Great guy, I've watched his Great videos guy. and uh, hopefully people will watch those. They're really good, uh, good installs. Now, he did an install on, on a heat pump, you know, and the radiators were massive. I saw your comments. For, oh, I, I, <laughs> my goodness, I don't know. And, and what he did with the pipework as well, that 22 mil pipework bent all around the chimney breast. Oh, oh. I thought, don't do that. And he's a good plumber. But he, and he's going, what's the problem? Why don't people, I love big radiators. I think I couldn't sell those to a customer if I tried. I can't even, do you know what? I said to a woman, because when I'm in there with my blow lamp and the, if a smoke alarm doesn't go off, I go, oh, you haven't got a smoke alarm or yeah. your smoke alarm's not yeah. working. It usually goes off straight away. Mm. Um, so I said to this woman, you haven't got any smoke alarms in here? She said, oh, I don't like those things. They look horrible. I'm not having those in my house, you know. They'd rather burn in their bed than have something that doesn't yeah, yeah. fit in with their decor. Yeah. So... So those big radiators, to me, are a massive problem for people. Yeah. Literally, you know, excuse uh, uh, the pun. Again, um, uh, well, so for that specific job, actually, I think that was the one he, that's one he did with us. So yeah. we, we were his MCS kind of company. Um, uh, Can I ask you about the customer? Is the customer particularly 
driven on the heat pump side. Oh of it, yeah, she's we're... very green. Yeah, yeah well, we I should have got her as one camera actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she is great. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's yeah. different ways I to design. Nobody else would put up with that. If they were. Well, but they didn't need that. It didn't need that. She wanted the extra efficiency though, so she's gone for the extra big radiators to get that cop, you know, right. Well, as high as yeah, possible yeah, and get yeah. the uh, emissions low. You don't need most houses do not need anything like that no, no. to just to make it clear. Mm. Um, uh, and it does make it awkward because the videos we're doing at the moment of our installs are these lovely big houses we stripped up the walls, there's extra insulation put in. You, that's all we've got access to. Uh, we do have some you know more normal houses, uh, but normal houses don't need all of that. They only need all that if you want to reach a scop average cop of five. And that means sometimes it's going to run at a cop of six or seven, or maybe not up to seven, but up to six, and then sometimes down at three and the average will be at five. Um, so, but you don't, if you just want it to run uh, without doing all the extra work, you can get a three and a half without the huge radiator as well, without tons of pe peeling back the walls and using the rads you've got, typically. Most pipe works are oversized in homes because it was sized back in Victorian times for dt11 and um, and high heat losses so if you're going to use the existing pipe work say yep you know say you've got no more than three radiators on a 15 mil run say you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. uh would you have a buffer in that situation or not um that wouldn't dictate whether i'd have a buffer or not uh, well, would would... You, how would you get the flow rates out of that because i saw your thing about taking out the manifolds on underfloor heating things and all the rest of it yeah, yeah. And i thought well wow, that's a that's a brave move especially when they they're yeah. trying to keep it below, like you if you've got that, yeah. candine floor or something and you're mm. trying to keep it below 27. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, yeah. that's tricky to do that. Because yeah, well, you shouldn't, you should, your, your maximum flow temperature should be set in the unit anyway. So it shouldn't be getting higher than it needs to. You can still have your over, overheat limits. Uh, if you've got a wooden floor or a vinyl floor and you want to keep it below, say, 27 degrees. That that will be that be floor surface surface yeah, not, not yeah, necessarily yeah. flow temperature okay, which yeah. aren't linked so you'd have to you could still if you've got specific floor like that still put your zone valve in uh, and still have a temperature cut off if you needed to. So However, why wouldn't you just let the manifold in there? Because uh, there's two points of mixing. Every time you get a point of mixing, there's a chance for um, uh, what we call distortion, which means the heat source has to get slightly hotter, slightly hotter, slightly hotter. Yeah, yeah. This is where our a cops sort of drift out yeah, from yeah. where they should be. Yeah. And it's like, it's not too complicated to understand. It's just not in the normal periphery of a normal heating engineer to understand no, that. No. We want to try and link the flow and return as little as often. And every time you've got a blending valve, you're linking yeah, the flow yeah, and return. Absolutely, bypass everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, yeah. Um, but you know, as units, as these new units come out, the R290 units, we can run on pretty much existing rads. Well, we can run on existing rads now with an R290 units. They go and up to 70 degrees and, and they, they keep cycle. the cop. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know, well, things are it, changing. You know, if you get the state of the art stuff, maybe, you know, okay, so, all right, here's an admission. Then maybe, maybe some of the technology I was looking at was old technology and some of my experience is old technology because I haven't installed a heat pump for years. So I'd be willing to accept that there are better heat pumps out there. Will they be installed by these companies? I don't know. Will they be installed by your highly trained engineers? I don't know. I like the idea you've got of a national network of, of guys who are Thanks. Yeah. good. That's, that's, that's a great move because if we had that for bathroom installers, that would be fantastic because we'll get so many people saying to us, yeah. find me somebody who can put in a shower without it leaking, mm. please, and we mm. can't mm. point them to a mm. particular person. So, yeah, again... How hard can that be? Putting in a shower that doesn't leak. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Biggest callback. The biggest callback in new build. Yeah, is yeah. The leaking showers. Yeah, yeah. Without a doubt. So yeah. crazy. That's that's what we're dealing with. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, but I, you know, it's as as we kind of move forward as a society as well. You're getting more and more people coming in without. I mean, there isn't an apprenticeship anymore. So how do people get in the industry? Yeah. They do just watch YouTube channels and, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. that's the only way they can kind of come into it, really, or they work for someone for lower wage. Mm. So it's something we're going to have more and more of an issue with. Uh, but provided we give the resources, the good, truthful resources of how to do things properly, hopefully we can mitigate, you know, some disaster. Mm. And then, you know, what we've obviously done with our training is, our training isn't just training where we tell them what to do and how to do it. It's actually very difficult to pass. We make it hard to pass. Yeah, yeah. We've got a 50% failure rate. Good. <laughs> I want people to fail. I've, I've, when I used to do my G3, my unvented course, you know, they, they, would, <laughs> they would always get you through. They never had yeah, a failure yeah, on that. You yeah. know, there, there were people who didn't get it right and they would take them aside again and coach them through every question. Question to went, oh yeah. Well, and I thought, oh, honestly, you know. a funny anecdote that Patrick should probably tell is his last gas safety thing was uh, taught in Urdu. They didn't speak English, and he still passed. Oh really? How is your Urdu? <laughs> it's, right, it's good. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> you have to learn it. <laughs>
<laughs> we got him through the gas gas safety. Free so, um, yeah, yeah uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the whole industry and the world in many ways is all, you know, it's all in a very, very funny place. But we've got more opportunity than ever with education and resources yeah, at the same time. So, yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, you know that thing that, that bad news travels faster than good news. So that's what's happened with heat pumps. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, as these stories start coming out, as these heat pumps are put in because of the government incentive, because yeah. people are going to be drawn into having it, because oh, 5,000 quid, it's too good to pass up. Uh, and we will have more and more uh, unhappy customers. We have more and more failures, and they will be the ones that get reported in the press. And we're getting loads and loads of them, believe me. Yeah. The, the, the emails we get week after week from people saying, Please help me. Somebody has, you know, put yeah. this heat pump in. I hate it. Get rid of it. Yeah, you know, you're certainly whatever. not going to get people writing to you, uh, writing a long message saying how. Well, heat, we do get a few. How, what, how their oh, how their oh. Heat is, house is normally heated is comfortable. Oh, we get loads. They don't. We, they we don't get loads very often. People saying you, you're full of. But if if, crap. if 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 the so it's a motive still. If the sun gets a you know a paper a, a story sent to them about how their heating is very normal, it's not going to get published, is it? We know how it all works. Oh. What um, what I'd like to do is invite you to an install with ours, like I said earlier yeah. on, because then if we can yeah. get if we can show people, and I tell you what, we'll find one that's an old house, Victorian, perhaps no cavity, loft insulation. You can see how it works, uh, and and you can get a live feed, because yeah, uh, yeah. then we can get the message out to people that it needs yeah, to be yeah. received by. Yeah, yeah. No, we're happy to do that. Awesome. Yeah, I'll bet you're going to say it's in North Scotland or something. <laughs> we'll find something there. Or whatever. <laughs> so you're aware Urban um, Plumber's a heat geek, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I've, I've watched his videos. I, I, I saw you trained him and he was your first approved installer, if you like, if that's the correct term. Yeah, that's... Heat geek, you call it. That's right, yeah. Um, now, th you've got others. Obviously, he's not the only one. Otherwise, he's very busy. We've got... Um, I think we're at about 170 nationwide, oh. but we've trained about 680 or something like that. So they're constantly coming through. Right, so you've trained 600 and odd, and only 170 of them are heat gigs. Yes. What's happened to all the others? We, they they've, even not, back. they've either not passed Whoa. yet. So they, you can go through as many times as you like. You can yeah. spend as long as you like. It's a long, it detailed... We don't just want to raise to where we think it should be. Yeah, We're yeah. trying to yeah. really... So you can fail the course. It means the heat geek that comes out the other end, who's on the map, yeah. if you want to look for a heat geek in your area, you look on our map. We guarantee we know their onions because we haven't just put them through training for a day. Turn up for a day's training, listen to the thing, right, you've got your certificate, off you go. No, we make sure that they've understood the information, fully absorbed it, and can implement that, that knowledge. Then... Because we know that, we can guarantee their installs. So if a Heat Geek does a, a, a heat pump installation with us, we give them the Heat Geek guarantee, which means if that install goes to shit, we'll go there or we get another local Heat Geek to go there and put it right. Really? So that you've got a map of, of the UK. Yep. All your Heat Geeks, your 170, did you say? Right? Ish, yeah. 170 are on it. And so... If a customer wants that higher level of install, if you like, you know, we'll take you at your word and this does exist, um, they go to the map, find a heat geek guy, mm -hmm. and then he contacts you to say, I want this underwritten by you. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, that, that's essentially, uh, yeah. Or you can contact us directly asking for a, an assured oh, okay. installation. All so right, we've got, so you'll give them a lead. You fill out a form. Yeah, so we give out, when we don't charge the guys for that or anything. Mm. Um, uh, so, yeah, we, we, we like to see if we can find them a heat geek we know that's yeah. best for them. Now, you know there are so many different organisations on that are supposed to, you know, check a trade and all the other ones, you know, my building. There are loads and loads out there, aren't there, which are all, you know, finding you superior guys. So in a way, you've entered that market and you stand to be discredited in that market yes. along with all those others because people yep. say, oh, this is just another one of those organisations where yep. you join up and, you know, yeah, the, it means nothing. Yeah, the difference being is they're looking for the pieces of paper where people have turned up for three days uh, and got their certificate at the end, uh, like the G3 or whatever other certificates yeah, you get, yeah. to say, oh, yeah, they are a plumber. We've actually not made sure that they um just got those certificates. We make sure they're actually competent to do the job. Yeah. So we've actually gone in, being heating engineers, knowing what to ask them to test them. You're not going to be able to answer these sort of maths questions without knowing mass flow rate, for example, which is something you learn inside yeah, the course. Yeah. So we, we prove competence. Uh, uh, we're not just um, you know using okay. our badge and, yeah, and yeah. not really knowing who we're putting in there. And yeah. we're not about mass installs. Yeah. We're just about ensuring that high quality. Yeah. 
I guess the sales bit out of the way. I, I guess the critical level when you when you know you've arrived is when people are sticking your logo on their van without asking, and that will happen. That happens with a lot of these organisations, checker trade, and all the rest of it. People just get that vinyl, stick it on their van, and nobody bothers checking. I so. haven't had any incidences yet. I no, don't no, think, no. But, uh, but, yes, but a good point. Uh, unf- yeah. Unfortunately, you know, it comes. In, you know, counter- yeah, yeah. counterfeit heat kicks. You know, it's, I'm sorry to depress you, but it's one of those things that... We're going to come across many happen, more things like know. that, I'm sure. Um, yeah. uh, but uh, we've got to start somewhere. So, yeah. And the, the oh, no, no, it's fine. customers haven't got anywhere to go to, have they, really? When, you, when you're when calling up a heat pump engineer, you're rolling the dice. Yeah. Uh, you know, and he might, he might be a salesman, but he might be a good salesman. He might know how to answer those questions. Hmm. And then who's he really passing it back to? Is he subbing it out to someone who really doesn't... Because the most important person isn't the one designing it in the office wearing the, the tie. The most important person in that... Whole install is the guy with the soldering iron or however he wants to put it together the last one connecting the pipes together he's the one who has to know what he's doing because you can mm. design all you want in the office mm. if it's not integrated into that house and every house is different it's all been adapted over the years it's not integrated correctly knowing how that design's meant to be put in you won't get the cops out of it mm. and you might not realize for a few years and you would have wasted all that fuel so that's the first half of the conversation between Adam and myself. And if you'd like to see the second half, then head over to the Heat Geeks channel and see the conclusion and have a look at their other videos while you're there.